Hello? Hello, honey. It's so nice to hear your voice. I have to admit, I had a hell of a time finding a new phone number for either of you. So, how are you doing there? Linda purred, trying not to show her excitement, and at the same time trying to hide the fear and melancholy that she really felt. Stacy hesitated for a moment before deciding to play it safe, just in case. Um, excuse me, who is this? For God's sake, Stacy, it's me, your mom. I... I'm sorry I didn't call earlier, but God, I expected that you would at least be able to recognize the voice of the mother who loved and raised you for more than 17 years, Linda said in a rather upset voice. Stacy smiled at the corner of her lips. In fact, she immediately realized that the call was from her mother, but given all the circumstances, she decided to be extremely careful. Her caution also had the advantage of being able to give her absent mother an emotional smackdown without seeming too rude. Oh, hi, Mom, she finally responded. You caught me off guard and I was just, you know, cautious. I don't want to get caught in the web of some telephone stalker. Stacy paused again and, after thinking a little, decided to object to her mother's remark that she loved and raised her for more than 17 years. The girl controlled herself, but was not going to give up showing polite barbs in the conversation. Mom, I don't think the last three years can be considered your education or love. I was almost 14 when you left us, and this call is the first news from you in the last three years, and now I'm already 17, and I haven't felt your motherly love for a long time. Linda sighed heavily. I'm so sorry, Stacy. It's just, back then everything was so so difficult that I felt like I had to leave. But enough about that. Believe me, I really called to see how you were doing and maybe talk to your sister and brother if they were nearby. Now that things have calmed down, I plan to be much more available to you. I hope we can reconnect, my girl, and you can reap the benefits of being the daughter of a wealthy mother now that Frank and I are married. There is so much I can do now for all my children, you, Rachel, and Josh. Our life now is much better than what it was when I stayed with your father. Don't get me wrong, baby. Your dad is a good man, but he just couldn't provide us with the blessings of life that Frank lavishes on me. Now he spoils me every day and I love it. Linda's voice was filled with enthusiastic joy. So now I want to show you children what real life is, the way she should be. At the same time, I will be able to make up for those terrible years when we were all struggling to make ends meet given your father's meager income. And yes, hopefully this will make up for my guilt when I suddenly had to, um, leave you. By this point, Stacy could barely contain herself, seething with anger. She loved her father, Ed Mercer, very much and respected him for the responsibility he took on for his children and the heartache he suffered when Linda left. Ed was forced to become a single parent, trying to raise two daughters one dealing with her own complex teenage problems, the other at age 10 and a wild 20-year-old son to boot. Stacy was also very proud of how her father changed their lives after her mother left. Before she left, Linda cleaned out all the bank accounts, so the family's financial situation suddenly seemed far worse than it had ever been in Stacy's memory. At the age of 14, young Stacy had to take on the role of a housewife, trying her best to help her family survive. Banding together, the father and children survived, but it was a difficult struggle that lasted more than eight months. Then it got easier when her father made some drastic changes, and now life was completely wonderful. It would have been very easy for Stacy to simply attack the culprit of much of the suffering that haunted the family and herself in the 14th year of the girl's life. Her famous fiery temper was there, lurking in ambush like a tiger on a loose leash, just waiting for a break and an opportunity to strike. Suddenly, Stacy felt a surge of absolute calm, and in an instantaneous flash of insight, she understood how to behave and what she needed to do in a conversation with her mother. And it was wonderful. If she had attacked Linda now, her mother would undoubtedly have hung up on her, and Stacy might never have seen or heard from her again. It wouldn't do anyone any good, and the daughter really wanted to maintain a relationship with her mother despite all the idiotic things she had done. 
Stacy enjoyed the feeling of calm that washed over her as she decided how to proceed. She would have expressed her point of view, would have rubbed her mother's nose into the disgusting mud of her mistakes, but at the same time would have preserved the chance for the continuation of the relationship between the children and their mother. Yes, it was the right strategy. The young lady smiled widely and thought, Stacy girl, you may have just learned an important life lesson. Mom, you'll never believe how hot I've become, she exclaimed. Wait a minute. Now I'll click on my phone's camera and send you a photo. Don't hang up. Stacy stood full length in front of the mirror built into the closet door in her bedroom, through the window of which bright sunlight streamed. The calendar said it was mid-June, and it was now about four o'clock in the evening, so the rays of the setting sun were hitting her west-facing window. Staring into the mirror, Stacy smiled brightly, and then half-turned slightly to show off her wheat-gold hair, styled in an elegant updo. She wore a full-length lavender evening dress, very elegant, and gracefully hugging her already very feminine figure, demonstrating the evolution of Stacy from not so long ago an angular, awkward girl into a full-fledged, albeit young lady. The floor-length dress was complemented by a set of long white gloves that elegantly fit her arms, ending just above her elbows. Stacy took a couple of pictures, choose the best one, and quickly sent the selfie to her mother's cell phone. Well, did you get the photo? Tell me what you think? She asked impatiently. There was a long pause, during which Linda considered and digested the consequences that the three passing years had on the life of a blooming young girl. Oh. Oh, my God. Stacy, honey, you're just... You're beautiful. I even... You... I have no words. Linda said this in a half-stifled, half-shocked whisper, trying to suppress the lump that was spasmodically squeezing her throat and causing a couple of tears to well up in the corners of her mother's eyes. Oh, Stacy, I miss my girl so much. My girl, I have you. You have grown so much. Oh, damn, what have I done? Stacy ignored her mother's confused muttering and snorted as she continued to press her. If you think you missed it, this wait a minute until you see Rachel. Stacy slipped across the hall to her little sister's room and pushed open the door, where her now 14-year-old sister was putting the finishing touches on her long, thick, honey-brown hair, styled in a very elegant updo. At the front, Rachel's hair came down in a few curly locks that framed her face. Her large, blue-gray doe eyes and soft features made many people, both men and women, stop and stare at her. Rachel's face was strikingly beautiful, and her slightly snub nose and dimples when she smiled gave the young girl an extra perky charm. Rachel, like Stacy, was also dressed in an evening dress, delicately elegant but much better at hiding her charms than the dress of her older and more mature sister. Hey, Rach, come on, strike a pose. Mom is on the line now and I will send her your photo, Stacy said, walking around her sister and looking for the best angle from which she intended to capture her. Around Rachel, helping her, was a woman of about 35, also dressed in an evening dress, clearly tailored to make an irresistible impression. This woman had that regal beauty that made the heads of all those present turn, wherever she appeared. The woman noticed the smartphone pointed at her and Rachel and was about to get out of the frame when Stacy intervened, waving her hand reassuringly. No, no, Janice. Stay where you are. I want you to be in the photo, too. Rachel was still a little stunned, but she finally rolled her eyes and, holding her palms to her mouth like a megaphone, shouted towards the phone, Hello, ma'am. I can't talk now, but let's get in touch sometime later. Circling around the room, Stacy took several photographs of Rachel and Janice and then waved her hand to them. They said, Free, ladies. I concentrated on choosing the best photo and sent it to its destination. After a pause, Stacy put the phone to her ear and asked loudly, I bet you don't recognize Rachel now. I mean, Mom, Rach even has breasts now. The younger sister immediately blushed and shouted, Stacy, you're stupid. Shut up. But a shy smile appeared on her face as the other two women in the room giggled at her painful embarrassment. 
Stacy turned her attention back to the phone she was holding in her hand. Well, what do you say, Mom? Amazed, Linda found it difficult to find the words. I, my God, I'm shocked, honey. Girls, you, you just stunned me. You've both grown so much and you're so beautiful. I'm so proud of both you and Rachel. How I wish I could be there now, next to you. Linda kept taking the phone away from her ear to once again look at the photographs of her girls, whom she missed now more than anything in the world. Her maternal heart was torn with regret and longing. Linda then hurriedly wiped her tear-filled eyes, and the details of the pictures appeared more clearly before her eyes. Listen, Stacy. Why are you two dressed up like that? You can't both go to prom, can you? She asked, puzzled. Stacy had effectively hooked her mom and was now ready to ostentatiously rub her nose in the face. No, mom. It's even cooler than prom. Remember that annual party that you were always crazy about, but that you and your dad were never invited to? That pompous, welcome to a summer evening party that Sedgwick and McTaggart throw? You know? Linda responded immediately. Of course I remember. This ball has always been the main social event of the year. Damn, I would give anything just to attend this reception. Only the most influential and beautiful people in the entire state are invited. Linda's voice clearly had a dreamy note. I so wanted to have the opportunity to dress up in a wonderful evening dress and communicate with representatives of the secular elite. I would love it so much. Linda sighed sentimentally and then suddenly broke free from the captivity of her imaginary dreams. Oh my God, did you and Rachel get jobs as hostesses or waitresses at that party? Wow, this is simply amazing. I'm so proud of you both. Just think, my daughters will be there, at the reception, among all these high society people. I envy you so much, exclaimed Linda, who took her breath away from the picture that presented itself. No, no, Mom, Rach and I are not service personnel. We are invited guests. Stacy shared with her mother the secret they shared with Rachel with pride and undisguised pleasure. Moreover, we will sit at the main table because Dad is the guest of honor at the ceremony. This is a surprise for him, but Dad will be especially noted by the organizers. Isn't this super cool? I will even be one of those who will participate in the ceremony. Oh my God, Mom, I'm so oh nervous, but at the same time, crazy excited. Linda was completely stunned. What? You're kidding, right? Stacy, baby, you've got to be kidding. Why would a lowly cost control clerk be invited to a welcome to a summer evening ceremony, not to mention being the guest of honor? Puff, that just doesn't happen in real life. Okay, admit it, honey, that you're just kidding me, right? Well, yes, of course, Mom, the eldest daughter snorted. Of course, Rachel and I dress up to the nines every day just to wait for your call and purposely annoy you. Come on, be realistic, Mom. A lot has changed since you left us. We were in great pain. No, we were all absolutely devastated. But Dad was able to unite us all together, and even Josh, and somehow created a new life for us, without you. Maybe I should fill you in on what's happened since you left us. Hmm. This needs to be done quickly, because the limo with Fona and Josh should be back. She glanced at her watch. In about 15 minutes. And then we will all have to leave. Stacy took a deep breath to suppress her anger before she began her story about their life after mom. Dad was practically destroyed when he found out that you were doing it with some old fart in your bed with him. You kind of disappeared right after he found out and threw it in your face. So personally, I think you were already planning to run away. You just had to move the date up a little. At this moment, Linda interrupted her daughter's story, whispering, Forgive me, Stacy. I didn't know you knew about what happened between your dad and me. But, but yeah, after your dad found out, I felt like I had to leave. What was the point of me staying? My God, he even had photos of us. Frank and I decided to leave the city and move into his apartment in Manhattan. And we've been living there ever since. Stacy, I... I'm sorry that your dad decided to tell you what happened. If you want to know, I think it was pretty low to involve you kids in this, in all of this. Bullshit, Mom. 
Unable to restrain herself, the girl screamed, stomping her foot in irritation. This is, well, really bullshit. Stacy then tried to control her temper and the destructive emotions that overwhelmed her. She took a couple of deep breaths and then continued, pronouncing the words clearly, Dad didn't tell us anything. This I told him this. Who do you think took those photos, huh? Ah, uh, that's it, Mom. That day, Rachel and I returned home, and everything was quiet, except for some strange sounds that came from your bedroom. I told Rachel to wait downstairs while I quietly went upstairs to check what was going on. When I saw how you were studying, you grabbed your phone, took a few pictures, and immediately sent them to your dad. Then Rach and I left the house and went to see friends. Later, when we got home that evening, you locked yourself in the bedroom and didn't come out, but we heard you crying. The next morning, you were gone. So the last picture of my loving mother that I still have in front of my eyes is her lying on her back under some disgusting old man in my father's bedroom. Come on, Mom, tell me I didn't need therapy to get those ugly images out of my head. I'm glad you two at least covered your bodies. Otherwise, I'd probably still be seeing a therapist. I... I can't believe that you were the one who betrayed me, Stacy. How could you do this? Linda exclaimed with mixed notes of frustration and indignation. I don't think now is the right time or place to exchange remarks about betrayal, Mom. It would be a pretty unequal match, don't you think? I can turn my fire hose on full blast against your water pistol at any moment, if you know what I mean. Not to mention what Rach and Josh might say about you, too. So do you want to sum up the results of the last three years or not? Speaking on the phone with her mother, Stacy was inwardly amazed at her own composure and how sensibly and thoughtfully she had handled the situation. It occurred to her that she had really grown and matured over the past few years. Linda, at that moment, realized that in order to have any kind of relationship with her children in the future, she would have to go through the hellish gates of responsibility for her actions and their consequences. This will not be an easy task for her. A few gifts and meetings with children will not automatically correct the situation. Something more is needed for this. Her children had to accept the inevitable and adapt to life without her. Linda really wanted to know how they coped, but to do that, she needed to hear how they felt about her decision and how they felt about their mother's life choices. Did they all hate her? There is no time to escape from reality now. If she backed down now, she would most likely lose them, and perhaps forever. But if she wants to restore the relationship, she will have to accept their feelings and let their passionate emotions pass through her. Is she ready for this? Was it all worth the pain she knew would surely come later? Linda pulled herself together. Her voice on the phone was soft and remorseful. Yes, Stacy, you are absolutely right. I suppose someday we will have to sit down and discuss all these issues in detail. But first, right now, we need to get back to some reasonable forms of communication. I called to reconnect with you, my children, and that would be a good first step, right? Well, now let me find out how your life turned out after I left. Stacy couldn't wait to tell her mother what had happened in the family's life since she disappeared. So she started babbling, Mom, you just won't believe what happened. It looked like some kind of novel or even a fairy tale. Anyway, after you left, Dad was depressed for a few months, and it was really bad. Very often, when Rachel and I would come home from school, I would make her stay outside while I went inside and made sure I didn't find Dad dead or something. Every time the phone rang, I jumped, thinking it might be a call from the police or the hospital or somewhere worse. I told Josh that he needs to pull himself together and stop drinking and partying because I can't be the only one in the family who is trying to hold on somehow. I think he really tried to come to his senses, but there was little real help from him. Eventually, one day, Dad started reading books about how to get over breakups, grief, and all that stuff. Often at night, he would simply lock himself in his bedroom, and Rach and I could hear the keys clicking on the keyboard of his computer. He wrote, pouring out his thoughts and feelings, and this, I think, helped him a lot. By the way, Mom, do you remember how overweight Dad was? So he started getting up early in the morning to run, and even dusted off the treadmill and weight machine 
starting to use them regularly. I thought he was trying to force himself to live life to the fullest again, which was wonderful news. Stacy paused and thought for a moment, then said, I'm guessing you probably don't want to know all this stuff about Dad, but it's really important in the grand scheme of what I'm trying to explain to you about our lives. So I'm sorry if this isn't what you want to hear. But by the way, Dad looks pretty sexy now. Even over the phone, it was clear that Stacy was smiling. No, no, it's okay, honey, I really needed to hear about this, but thank you for taking care of me and telling me about how everything happened for you. I really want to know how things are going with you, Rachel and Josh. Well, with Rachel, it's simple. After what happened, she seemed to shut down, retreat into herself, and remained in this sort of detached state for quite a long time. Now she's almost back to her old self, and you won't believe how well she's doing. A lot of it has to do with Janice. She and Rachel really became friends. Linda looked at the photo on her phone again and zoomed in, this time paying special attention to the woman who was helping Rachel get dressed. Okay, so who is this? Janice. You're talking about... Oh, sorry, Mom. Janice is Dad's girlfriend. Isn't she gorgeous? And she's so sweet. She is a former swimsuit model, but Janice is still involved in modeling. She really helped Rachel come out of her shell and now supports her desire to start a career in the modeling world. Stacy perked up, nearly jumping out of her bed when she remembered something. About. By the way, Mom, you should definitely pick up a copy of last month's Teen Fashion World magazine. Rach is on the cover and she looks absolutely stunning. Recently, she has really become a very popular model. What? How? When did all this happen? First your father hooked up with a girl half his age, and now she's selling your little sister to some dirty photographers. If only I knew what she was doing with the cheesecake photo one, then I... I will bring charges against both your father and this Janet or whatever her name is. The enraged Linda almost choked from the indignation that gripped her. Stacy waited to respond to calm the situation a little, and then spoke very quietly for added effect. Mom, listen. Dad and Janice are very, very. They treat any modeling work that Rachel or I do with care and caution. At least one of them is present at each of our shoots. And before that, they insist that the photographer sign a strict contract with Dad, according to the terms of which not a single photo will be taken without Dad's permission and approval. Do you really think Dad would allow any of us something even remotely close to cheesecake? He won't even allow Rash to appear in a swimsuit, and as for Daddy's girlfriend, I already said that her name is Janice. She's 34 years old, so there's an 11-year difference between her and Daddy. Actually, it's a lot less than between you and your Frankie, who is... how old? Is he already 100 years old? I don't know, Mom, whether they will ever get married or not, but from what I see, they are very good together, and Janice helped him a lot. From time to time, she even compliments him, so Dad looks pretty happy. In any case, I have never seen him as happy as he has been in recent months. That's it, Mom. I'm honest about what I see and feel, if you really wanted to know. Frank is only 66 years old compared to my 43, Stacy, Linda interjected with some displeasure. I'm just not sure that working as a model is a good life choice for Rachel. I definitely wouldn't allow that. She would be better off doing something more worthwhile that would bring benefit to her life. Stacy bit her tongue to keep from losing her temper and blurting out something like, Worthy? And what, for example? Maybe abandon your family to become a trophy decoration for some decrepit, 66-year-old money bag? So she turned away from her cell phone and took a deep breath, trying to control her nerves, after which she brought the cell phone back to her ear and continued, not paying attention to the fact that she was interrupted. Rachel's modeling career helped her a lot, Mom. She's not nearly as shy as she used to be. She now carries herself with a confidence and composure that she never had before. Rach finally realized who she was, what she could achieve, and what she was really truly good at. You know, she even sometimes commands the studio or suggests interesting themed poses for some of her shoots. Let's face it, Mom. Rachel was never an excellent student and always considered herself a failure because she thought that nothing good awaited her in the future. Now she can become a world-class fashion model before she even graduates from high school, 
and she will have a bank account that even you would be proud of. And before you ask, yes, Mom, I said that I also work as a model, but I'm not so passionate about it. Rachel and I show fashion together, but I mostly act as an extra, a supporting model to complement Rachel's look, or to wear an outfit in a different cut or color that's slightly different from the one she's showing. The best part about all of this is that Ratch and I have become very close because we help each other and work together. Plus, I get paid well, so I've recently saved enough money for college and continue to fund my account. I still like studying at school, so you don't have to worry. My grades are fine. I take a few extra classes each semester so I can graduate early and go to college. I still have an A average, but I'm a little worried about chemistry this year. This is not an easy class, but I need to master it if I'm going to go to veterinary school. Stacy remembered something else and perked up again, even giggling as she did so. Oh, Mom, you won't believe it when I tell you. Rach and I keep some of the outfits that we show off at shows and shoots, so now I actually have a really cool wardrobe. Can you imagine? In fact, now I am one of the most fashionably dressed girls in our class, and not some creepy nerd. Many of the girls in my class who used to be in the Too Cool For You League are now asking me for fashion tips, and some have even asked for my autograph. Well, isn't it too funny, sometimes to the point of nauseating? So, Mom, I'm almost popular, and the best part of all this is that guys are starting to pay attention to me, Stacy giggled. All this news from her daughter greatly disturbed Linda, who had always struggled to achieve some level in society. She herself did not know exactly what, but a certain level in society. She abandoned her family in order to at least achieve social recognition on a personal level, but it seems that most of her family members achieved greater heights without her, Linda. And what further aggravated the situation and caused her annoyance inside, they achieved such stunning success, seemingly without making any special efforts. Linda sighed heavily. Baby... I'm very glad that everything is so good with you and your sister. By the way, although I'm afraid to ask, how are things going with Josh? Is my boy okay? Stacy took a deep breath and glanced at the clock on the bedside table, knowing that the limousine with Josh and Fauna would appear very soon. She did not want to move on to the next topic, fearing that she would not have enough time to talk in detail about her brother. However, having made sure that, in all likelihood, she would have time to share information about Josh with her mother. Stacy continued, Well, Mom, to my surprise, I have to admit that Josh has turned his life back on track. You yourself know that he was quite wild even before you left, and after that he continued drinking and partying even more with his friends. For a while he went completely off the rails. Eventually, one day, my dad got really angry and demanded that he quit these damn parties and at least get a job or go back to school. Well, brother, he, um, sent dad to hell, so he eventually kicked him out and told Josh not to come home until he found a job. Dad even had to call the cops a couple of times to get him out of the house. Mother couldn't believe her ears. What? Your idiot father threw my son out of the house? How dare he? I will ask Frank to contact a lawyer and sue this scoundrel, Linda raged, clutching the phone and seething with anger. Well, good luck with that, Mom, Stacy said with some irony in her voice. She knew that her mother always considered Josh her favorite and allowed him to get away with any artistic behavior. Moreover, Stacy knew that Linda supported his antics by giving him money whenever he asked for it. In fact, his sister thought Josh was very lucky that he was never arrested and did not get into serious trouble. All this happened a year and a half ago, Mom, and since then Josh and Dad have practically made up. Josh spent some time parasitizing on his friends, but even they got tired of supporting his lazy ass, so they kicked him out too. He lived on the streets for some time, but eventually decided that he didn't like that kind of life, especially when he saw that the three of us were doing well. Well, one day Josh came to his dad, apologized, and said that he wanted to return home. Dad stuck to his old get-a-job-first attitude, so Josh got a job working on a roofing crew. After that, he finally returned home, but his dad made him pay his share of the living expenses to show him what it meant to be an adult. Stacy grinned. 
It was kind of funny listening to him whine about his hard job and how he has to pay for food, rent, and his car, and then he doesn't have any money left. Dad always told him that this is how the real world works and that Josh should get used to it. This went on for about a year until Fono appeared. Don't tell me that your father has another girlfriend. Linda was indignant. Who is this Fona? Stacy laughed. No, Mom. Fona is Dad's personal assistant. She is very sharp-tongued and does not tolerate any objections from anyone around her. Dad always calls her his cool boss. She is only 22 years old, but she knows her job well and doesn't let anyone down. Actually, Fona met Dad during a conference he was working at in Minneapolis. She came up to him, shook his hand, and said that if he wanted to achieve real success, he needs to hire her to organize all the trips, book tickets, and manage his expenses. She then handed Dad her resume and told him to call her when he was ready to get serious about his career. Dad was impressed by her no-nonsense business approach and dedication and hired Fona immediately. Now she lives with us, and Dad jokes about having his own harem at home. Ha 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 ha. This is really funny. Stacy laughed. Fona really played an important role in helping Dad develop his new career. For me... She is like my own big sister, and we all love her very much. If you want to know, Mom, Fona is a real cutie from Norway. He is 1 meter 70, has a cool haircut, short blonde hair, and light blue eyes. Poor Josh, when he saw her for the first time, immediately fell head over heels for her. But smart girl Fona told him, in a snappy way, that she wasn't going to date anyone who was bumbling around like, um... Well, in short, who had no purpose in life? So suddenly Josh had an unprecedented motivation. Stacy's voice took on a certain air of solemnity as she told her mother the latest news about her brother. And now the most important thing, Mom. You'll probably be shocked, but... Four months ago, Josh enlisted in the Air Force and is soon heading to California, to a language school in Monterey where he will study Russian. Um... Well... I think so. What? Air Force? Language school? Russian? Holy shit. Linda gasped in holy horror. It was already beyond her understanding. Quietly chuckling at her mother's reaction, Stacy continued, It's just crazy, isn't it? Josh is currently at Lackland Air Force Base waiting to be cleared, so his dad asked him to take some time off to come home and attend a party in his honor. By the way... Fona has begun to treat him more softly, but still does not want to admit that she and Josh are a couple. But we girls can say that she also fell in love with him. Fona isn't dating anyone else, and the two spend hours talking on the phone whenever the opportunity arises. This is so cute. Josh, he looks like he's, well, smitten. Yes, and he has a plan to finish language school and go to college to get a diploma and become an officer. Can you believe it, Mom? My always crazy brother, and suddenly a military officer. For those who knew him before, this sounds like real nonsense. How strange it is what love can make you do, can't it, Mom? Stacy smiled at her thin stiletto heel, pointed at her mother, during an innocent discussion of her brother's plans for the future. Suddenly a baritone voice was heard in the background singing, The Impossible Dream. Stacy laughed, jumped off the bed, and ran into the hallway outside her bedroom. Oh, Mom, you should hear this! She blurted into the phone. The girl extended her hand with the phone in the direction of the male voice, just when, in unison with it, a series of wolf howls and moans were heard, emitted by female voices. Then Rachel shouted with laughter in her voice, pa a ap Sing my favorite song far, far away! Janice joined her. Don't even think about shirking your day job. Stacy added, Dad... Why don't you take this with you on the road? Looks like the bus leaves in ten minutes. Against the background of laughing girls, Ed's voice could be heard, filled with feigned indignation. Girls, you are killing me. What kind of life do I have? No respect in my own family. I've had enough. From now on, all you bastards are crossed off my Christmas list. A new burst of laughter was immediately followed by a female choir with three voices. We love you, Daddy, and the man's promise that everything is fine. They are back on the Christmas list. After that, 
Stacy returned to the phone, continuing to giggle. Dad is so funny now. He always sings when he's happy or nervous, and we always start egging him on. This is our little game with him. Oh. That was all Linda could squeeze out, because she couldn't say anything more. It was quite obvious that her family lived just fine without her. Before this conversation with her daughter, Linda subconsciously hoped that they were all still suffering greatly because they missed her. There was no trace of any of this, so she simply fell silent, falling into some kind of stupor. Stacy picked up the thread of the conversation and continued her story. Dad doesn't know yet that he'll be the guest of honor at the party tonight, but he's already a little nervous because he and Jack McTaggart are going to play a couple of guitar duets with the band. You know Dad and his blues guitar stuff, right? Here you go. After he and Jack became sort of buddies, they discovered that they both loved playing guitar. And since then, they get together almost every week to stretch their fingers on the strings and drink a few beers. Mom, you should hear them joke about how they will soon become rock stars. Ha 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 ha. They're actually pretty good, though, but they do their jams just for fun. Tonight is their first public performance, and I'm sure it will be fun. Just imagine, Dad in a tuxedo playing the guitar on stage. Stacy grinned, imagining this picture in her head. Upon hearing this stunning news, Linda was stunned again. Stacy, what are you talking about? Your father and John McTaggart are friends? Did I hear correctly? Is that John McTaggart? Why, how did this happen? Stacy smiled inwardly again, with some malice. She knew that her mother thought highly of the McTaggart family and had a deep reverence for them, for their wealth and power. She also remembered that her mother always dreamed of meeting the McTaggarts in person, and now Stacy's father and Jack McTaggart not only met, but also became practically best friends. Stacy also liked the fact that the rich and famous head of the family insisted that members of the Mercer family call him simply Jack, rather than the official Mr. McTaggart. In fact, in person, Jack turned out to be quite a pleasant person who played an important role in the beginning of Ed's writing career. Yes, Mom. The same John, or Jack, as his close friends call him, McTaggart, confirmed Stacy. It all started when my dad wrote a couple of articles about how a man can survive and rebuild his life after such a traumatic event as losing everything when your cheating wife leaves you and runs off with her new boyfriend. When a couple of small magazines bought his articles for publication, Dad was absolutely delighted. Then, I believe, Jack read Dad's articles, contacted him, and asked him to give a motivational speech at one of the McTaggart Corporation employee meetings. We all thought Dad was going to have a heart attack when he heard about Jack's proposal. Dad prepared a lecture based on his articles and read it at a meeting with employees. The speech went very well, and he received many warm comments and thanks from people, and Jack hired him again, this time to speak at the company's annual meeting of shareholders. After the new success, Dad began to receive offers to speak at other meetings from various companies represented by the board of directors, and from that moment, everything went like clockwork. Dad began to write more and more. His articles were published in more famous and larger magazines, and soon he decided to quit his previous job in order to devote all his time to writing and public speaking. Jack continued to introduce Dad to important people. They began to communicate more often and soon discovered that they both liked to play blues and rock guitar. Because of music, she and her dad became even closer, and since then, they have become friends. Stacy paused for a long time to give her mother time to process everything she had heard. After all, it was an amazing turn of events in their lives. Your father is now a writer? Seriously? Author? Published writer? Your father and my ex-husband are in magazines now? A stunned Linda struggled to wrap her head around the paradoxical-sounding concept of her former loser suddenly turning into a successful person. She secretly hoped that it didn't pay so well. Meanwhile, sounds of some activity could be heard from the first floor of the house. People arrived. There was a muffled hubbub of conversation and light laughter. A new, strong male voice stood out from the others, 
as well as a much softer female one. Stacy saw Janice leave Rachel's room and head towards the stairs leading to the first floor. It was not difficult to guess that she was heading down to act as hostess to the new arrivals. Suddenly, Stacy remembered an item on tonight's agenda that she had almost forgotten. Mom, I'll have to go soon. Jack and Mona McTaggart are already here, along with photographers to take pictures for the newspaper's gossip column and the special photo album they publish and sell every year. There will be a detailed photo report about the magical time that the invited people spend at their summer evening. If you must know, personally, the pathos makes me want to puke. But I think the sales of this almanac bring in a lot of money for charity. So in the end, it's a good cause. And we, the participants in the action, feel so warm and good there. Almost like some kind of celestial beings, she snorted. There was a fair amount of sarcasm in Stacy's voice, because the girl really found this event to be overly pretentious, and unnecessarily pandering to the feelings of vanity and narcissism of its guests. Still, she couldn't help but feel a sense of pride that her father's achievements had suddenly elevated their family to a level of social standing that others, and especially her wayward mother, would treat with the respect they deserved. Linda was quick to defend this high society practice. Oh, Stacy, don't take this so lightly. It is a great honor to be included in this almanac and know that you took part in a historical event. You and Rachel should be absolutely thrilled to be the guests of honor at such a grand event. And since you'll be sitting at the main table, your photos will be on almost every page. I've secretly bought one of these books almost every year, and this year I'll be able to show everyone a photo of Josh, you, and Rachel and proudly say, look at these special people. Those are my kids. God, just think. In fact, I am very jealous of you, but at the same time, I am very proud. I will definitely be ordering a few copies of this yearbook as soon as they release them. Okay, Mom, Stacy answered absently, and then seemed to remember something else. About! Here's another thing. Dad was going to some writing event in New York over Labor Day weekend, and Rachel, Janice, Fona, and I were going to go with him. Maybe then we can meet you. I'd really like to see you, and I'm sure I could get Rachel to come too, but you should know that she's still very angry at you for leaving home. Maybe we'll take Janice with us so you can meet her. Um, you'd probably also like to see Dad? Just in case, the daughter clarified. Oh, Sunshine, this is an amazing idea. Linda was inspired. Yes, yes, let's think of something. I really want to see you and Rachel but about your dad and his girlfriend. I'm not sure that's a good idea. There was too much pain on both sides. However, I would like you to meet Frank. After all, he is your stepfather now. Hearing the last phrase, Stacy stuck a finger in her wide open mouth with her tongue hanging out, pretending to gag, and then said, Well, no, Mom. I still have nightmares about you and your Frankie huffing on top of each other. Brr. So the only way I could meet him and you is if Dad and Janice are there too. I think this will be fair. Linda was not happy with the way her daughter responded, but tried to hide her emotions in order to continue the conversation. Okay, we'll see how things work out, Stacy. but let's not spoil our common goal, which is for us to finally see each other. I can't wait to see and hug you and Rachel again, so let's focus on that, honey. By the way, coincidentally, the New York Literary Guild is hosting a Meet the Books Day on Labor Day weekend, and Frank is using his influence to get us tickets to attend. I'll put pressure on him to get tickets for all of us, the mother promised. Captivated by the upcoming prestigious event, Linda excitedly told her daughter about her plans. This Biennale should turn out to be a very high-status event. Can you imagine, Stacy? Many famous writers will appear there and some of them will sign their books and interact with readers and fans. Perhaps you can take a selfie with one of the famous authors. You should see how excited Frank is. There is no need to talk about me. Did you know that David Volchis himself promised to be there, and Frank really wants to meet him? David is an aspiring writer, but Frank says his first book is sensational and absolutely brilliant. Yes, 
I know that here on the coast, people usually hear about the latest trends and events earlier than in the Midwest, but perhaps you've heard of David. Stacy sensed a somewhat condescending tone in her mother's words and couldn't help but laugh, deciding to respond to her with a similar level of irony. Yes, Mom, I've heard about David Volches. Moreover, I met him several times. Of course, I agree that his work is simply magnificent. Some time ago, I read his book and found it quite, how should I say, provocative, yes. Have you read his book yourself, Mom? Linda was caught off guard by Stacy's barb, but decided not to react. No, to be honest, I can't say that I read it. I'm not a big fan of this kind of reading, but Frank, oh, he's definitely a fan. Stacy laughed and almost said something about how that book didn't have enough pictures for her mom's literary tastes, but she refrained. Mom, do you have a harder paperback copy of David's book on hand? Linda looked around and then went into Frank's office. Mmm, yes, we have his hardcover book right here on Frank's desk. Why are you asking? Mom, look at the back inside of the dust jacket and tell me what you see. Now, so... Here is a photo of the author of the book. Oh, Lord, it's Ed. Oh, my God. This is a photo of your father that I took about seven or eight years ago. Lord, how can this be? It can't be David Vulture's. Your father, not David Vulture's. Please tell me if this is some kind of mistake. Stacy doubled over laughing, trying not to choke as the irony of the moment sunk in. There's nothing you can do, Mom. Yes, yes, and yes. David Volchus is actually Edward J. Mercer. When Dad decided to write a novel, he wanted to share his writing goals for a variety of reasons, so he came up with a pseudonym and published his first novel under the name David Volchus. This is all so funny, Mom, Stacy barely said into the phone, wiping away the tears that came out from laughter. Just think, your new husband's favorite author is your own ex-husband. No, it's just hilarious. I haven't laughed so hard for a long time. They could make a movie about this. Damn, I just can't believe it. No one could come up with such crap. Ah ha ha, Mom, this is too funny. Linda just sat there, looking devastated, and finally said quietly, Shit. Stacy already had to go, so, ending the conversation, she said, still chuckling, I have to go, Mom. I'll send you my email address, and you can send me yours, and we'll agree on our plans for Labor Day weekend. I'm so glad you called, and I really want to see you again. I love you, Mom. Phew, this is still too funny. In some inexpressibly gloomy voice, Linda asked, Say hi to your brother and sister for me and give them my number so they can call me when they get a chance. I love you too, Stacy. The eldest daughter turned off the phone and went downstairs, still giggling to herself at the unexpected consequences of the recent turn of events, and, preening in front of the large mirror, prepared to take photos for the social onlookers. Stacy knew that tonight she would have no problems with her dazzling smile, but only she would know the reason for her excellent mood. Linda continued to sit in deep thought for a long time, staring blankly at the book lying on the table in front of her, until she came to the clear realization that karma is truly a vengeful bitch. She didn't have time to completely move away from the conversation with Stacy when Frank almost trotted into the room. Linda! You will never believe what happened. I just received a card from David Volchis. I wrote to him telling him how much I enjoyed his book and how much I was looking forward to seeing him in September. And so, he answered me. And he wrote the message with his own hand. Can you imagine? Wait, I'll read it to you now. Dear Frank, you have no idea how glad I am that you read and liked my first novel. Although you may not know it, it was you who provided very a very positive influence on my life and career. I don't know if I can ever thank you enough for this, so I look forward to thanking you in person. You have lifted a huge weight off my shoulders and provided a much-needed spark for my personal growth as a person and a writer. So I am deeply indebted to you. Best wishes, David Volchez. Frank, in his ecstatic joy, continued to babble excitedly about how he must have met David once because his photograph in the book looked a little familiar to him, but he couldn't remember where he had seen the now popular writer. Now her now husband couldn't wait to meet him in person, hoping to become a good friend to his new favorite author. 
All this time of intense joy and bustle around her, Linda continued to become more and more gloomy and depressed as Frank's words sunk deeper and deeper into her mind. Finally, in a creaky voice, from the depths of her parched throat, she exhaustedly squeezed it out, Shut up, Frank, just shut up. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one.